Nothing about this market justifies your S&P 500 target of 4,800. Nothing about this market justifies your earnings projection of $245. And nothing about this market justifies your multiple of near 20 times at 19.6. So how do you justify it? It's a great question. Thanks for teeing that up. You know, uh, we've been wrong. And with much humility, we've lost our clients' money this year. It's very difficult to have these conversations. But I will tell you this, Scott, and I'll answer the question. If you take a look at our nine portfolios that we have the very good fortune of running for BMO, our AUM is up this year in a down market and underperforming market. What does that mean? We have the trust of our clients through a long-term process and discipline that we've been doing this for years, at 10 years at BMO and 33 years on Wall Street. And you must persevere. And how do you persevere? You persevere through a process and a discipline. Now, that is your opinion of those three matters. We would say this on all of them. You are basing uh, your 4,800 target uh, on, and, and being negative with respect to my 4,800 target on what we know right now. And you're playing into how the market is acting because we are so inclined to what's happening right now, and we are not positioned for any kind of good news. We're positioned for, uh, for inflation to stay at this 8 or 9 percent handle for a long time. If you go back and look the last 30 years, the average inflation is somewhere around 4 percent. The Fed came out and said what their targets are in the low fives, and I think the Fed is, is still the, is the thing to listen to. The Fed has lost a lot of credibility. Everybody keeps talking about it. But no one was giving the Fed uh, crap in March of 2020 when they did what they did. So I think we're not positioned for, uh, as a marketplace, Scott, for what's coming. We're not positioned for a positive surprise. On the earnings front, okay, for the last 10 years, the average growth rate in terms of S&P 500 companies has been 10 percent. But the numbers coming into those average years since 2009 is something around 7 or 8 percent. Companies have consistently for a decade undershot their earnings, underpromised and overdelivered. Doesn't mean that we're not going to see some earning weakness. Doesn't mean that we're exactly going to hit the 245 number. But I'll, we are not going to be $200 earnings. Right now, we're pacing at $230 earnings. And oh, by the way, if you take a look at numbers the last uh, 30 days, Energy is up 10 full percentage points in terms of 2022 earnings. Uh, materials are up 800 basis points, so eight full percentage points. Consumer discretionary stocks are only down 2%. And communication services, which is another sector that's been down, which, oh, by the way, we upgraded. We think it's a great bottom fishing idea here, down a, a, a buck and a half, so a percentage and a half. Technology has actually been very strong. So remember, when you take a look at earnings, it's a contribution to earnings. And I know Deegan was talking about Microsoft and Apple. Uh, these companies are, are, are earnings machines and cash flow machines. And the key thing is that their earnings have been increasingly stable versus a lot of the high multiple tech stocks that we've said on your air and other shows that we think the very high multiple, no growth, no earnings uh, are going to be dead for five years. I think those names are going to be dead for a while as investors kind of come back to more stable. So I still think that we're achievable. Flat is the new up. I think we're going to have a surprise in the second half that no one's positioned for. This is me not being Pollyanna. I don't come on your broadcast when I'm right when the market's bullish and do a happy dance. Uh, we don't do that. We're humble on the upside. We're humble on the downside. And that's where we're going to stick with.